Let's quickly talk about how we're going to be conducting this sort of experimental way of looking at starting locations. Uh, we're going to be running on fairly standard settings. The only thing I have changed is Pangea, so it's all default, except we're running on a Pangea map. So if you want to try and run this experiment yourself to try to learn how to analyze starting locations, that is how you do it. So to start with, we're going to cover the basics of how to analyze a start location. And I have selected a random civilization. So every time we re-roll, we're going to get a chance to maybe have a, have a little bit of insight in how your civilization might specifically influence uh, how you analyze a start location. The, obviously, the most important and prime thing that you're going to be looking for in a starting location is going to be fresh water, green tiles. You want to be settled on fresh water, particularly in your capital, because I believe it'll let you get to six pop, well, five without growth penalties, which is pretty nice. What are we looking for in a starting location? Well, the first thing that we're looking for is a good tile to settle on. That's like, that's number one. And then after you found a good tile to settle on, you're looking for good tiles to work within the first and second ring of that settlement. We have spawned here on the grassland hill. Now, we could settle in place here, but there's a better location. We could settle in place here and we would have a two food, one production tile underneath our capital. Because uh, what your capital does is it takes the uh, tile underneath it and it tries to conform it to two food and one production. So if we settled over here, it would be two food and one production underneath the capital tile. But the actual best location for us to settle here is right here on this Plains Hill. Uh, Plains, Hill are, Plains Hills are very, very unique. They provide your city with plus one production for the entire game. Now, me personally, uh, it takes me on average about 250 turns to win a game of Deity. So that's an extra 250 production in my empire from turn one working away from me, helping me get my settlers out quicker, helping me get my districts out quicker. So I will always try to settle on a Plains Hill if it's available. There are other reasons though that this spot is better. If we take a look at the first ring of tiles that are available to this grassland hill, not only are we missing out the one production of this, but the tiles that are available to work aren't very good. So generally speaking, you want to have at least one tile within one tile you want to have one tile immediately workable by your capital that has a yield of four so for example uh, this plains hill forest here is one food three production that's a four yield this mercury mine is one two three yield these deer tiles over here are two food, three production. Those are five yield tiles. Those are incredible. On top of the fact that we are um, going to be settling on this Plains Hill and we're going to have two five yield tiles here and still be in range of the Mercury. That's incredible. This is a really, really powerful starting location. Other important things that you're willing to consider with your starting location are the number of hills available to you. So let's have a quick hill count. So within the first... Generally speaking, you're only ever going to work the hills within the first two rings of your city. So that's immediately adjacent and then one tile out. Anything that's three tiles out, you're probably going to have to purchase, which is why we assign a lower value. So for example, two hills on an inner ring are worth like six hills on the outer ring because you're, it's just going to take so much culture and time for you to ever get out there and work those. Uh, you could honestly, a single hill in the inner ring is worth an arbitrary number of hills on the outer ring, just because of how impractical or expensive it would be to work those outer rings. Um, you, want your, you want your things to be available to you as cheaply and quickly as possible. So let's move our settler over one tile. Now, a lot of people have the debate of should you move or not? And really, it's not a debate about should you move or not. I mean, I think it's extremely obvious uh, to me that I should move to this Plains Hill for a number of reasons because of the knowledge that I have, the plus one production, these amazing high yield uh, deer tiles and the fact that it doesn't really move me too much. There's also another advantage here which is where the civilization specific analysis comes in in that we're playing the Netherlands and we get extra bonuses from being on rivers. Uh, we do lose a little bit of a bonus because we're not coastal but that's not a big deal because a couple of our bonuses are coastally related but settling on a river here 
means that by moving to the left, we could potentially fit another city on this river and get some more adjacency bonuses for our districts. So that's sort of an, an example of when the uh, analysis of individual civilizations can come into play. When we're doing a starting location, we're also going to want to consider what way do we want to scout with our warrior? Now, I could scout to the left here, but when I settle this city, it's going to reveal most of these tiles. And this land over here looks much flatter. So I'm going to make my way over here so I can start to explore down the river because I want to know if I want to settle there. And that's again because I'm playing the Netherlands. So there's all these like small little adjustments and things that you're going to want to uh, keep in mind as you play. And really, don't worry about getting this stuff right immediately. It'll take some time. So we revealed mountains here. This is even better. Mountains are really, really good if you're going for a faith or science victory. So that's another thing in the favor of this capital. Unfortunately, it is where the deer tile is, but deer tiles are also really, really nice, particularly forest deer tiles in Rise and Fall because of the Governor Magnus, who uh, gives you double plot harvest and feature removals. And with feature removals and plot harvesting, you can actually guarantee certain wonders on deity. For example, you can guarantee the Temple of Artemis, you can guarantee stuff like the Ruhr Valley, you can guarantee stuff like the Big Ben with lots of chopping. Uh, pretty much any wonder that you can reasonably tech to on par with the AI, they won't be chopping out their wonders. So if you have stuff like Deer and Forests with Magnus, you can secure yourself a few wonders even on the highest difficulty. Okay, so we kind of explored our standard location and we picked a good spot. Let's have a look at another starting location where we can begin to analyze and perhaps contrast it to this starting location. Okay, so here's a starting location as Brazil. Now this is quite an interesting starting location because it is a lot of hills. That means potentially we could pack a lot of cities in here and get a lot of production, particularly in the mid game after we pick up uh, apprenticeship, which will give our mines extra production, which will mean these plains hills would be uh, one food for production tiles. And grassland hills are very, very nice. So this is a very nice starting location for a number of reasons. Uh, lots of hills, lots of rainforest for chops, and bonus points. We are playing Brazil, so we get extra adjacency from rainforests. Just as an aside there, I consider the rainforest adjacency bonus to be an early game bonus because I think rainforests are still worth chopping, even if you're playing Brazil. So this is where some interesting analysis can come. Um, it may actually be worth our while to not move one tile, but two tiles, and to settle on the truffles. I talked about how Plains Hills are the best tiles to settle on. So this is a Plains Hill right here. So this is one of the best tiles to settle on. The only thing better than a Plains Hill tile to settle on for your capital, or indeed any city, is a Plains Hill tile with a luxury. And there are truffles right here. So we would give up two turns... However, we would pick up three gold per turn for the rest of the game, which means we essentially sacrifice a couple of turns of an advantage for um, somewhere in the region of you know, 750 gold. Let's say it takes me about 250 turns to win a game of deity. So that absolutely seems worth it to me. I generally speaking, I won't move more than two turns. If you can get your capital settled, within two turns on a really powerful tile, that is, you have your city placed on turn three, you're you're going to be okay. I think any more than two, like once we're hitting like three, I'm really questioning, unless I have like an, a god tier um, natural wonder to settle on that'll give me either culture or science. Um, then, then I would definitely consider it. So uh, in this instance, pretty much most of these tiles within two range here, uh, towards down. For example, here is good, here is good, here is good, here is good. Now, the additional thing that makes this tile really nice is these are Plains Hill jungles with, um, so they have two food and two production. So that means like, even if I move over here, I'm still getting really, really good yields. And two food, two production tiles are about as good as you can ask for in the early game. Uh, typically, I would look for two of those, but right now we've got four of them, which is really, really strong in the early game because it's going to let you grow and produce. So let's walk over to the um, truffles and settle in place, and I'll show you this. So there is another reason you want to settle on luxuries in Civilization VI, and it's not just 
because you get the the yield from the luxury. So normally when you settle a city, you would get plus five gold. And you can see here, we indeed are making plus eight because we get to keep that plus three gold from settling on the luxury. And it's a plains hill, so we keep the plus one gold, plus one production. So right now we have a city producing eight gold and 6.3 production. Don't forget it gets multiplied by amenities, but I'm kind of like, I'm leaving that by the wayside for now. So this is our, this is our really, really strong start. Now there is a bit of desert over here, which is, you know, a couple of points out of its favor. Um, the second most important reason you want to settle on a luxury is because it allows you to immediately sell luxuries to the AI. And in the early game, you can often get the first turn you meet an AI and you give them a delegation, you can often get somewhere in the region of 100 to 160 gold. And that's about half the price of purchasing a settler in the early game. So if you settle on a luxury and then quickly grab a builder and get a second luxury online and sell that to an AI as well, you can often purchase a settler by turn 12 or uh, turn 12, somewhere between turn 12 and 20, while also building a settler. So you can get two settlers out by like turn 22, 25, which is really, really powerful. I've had games where I just continuously chain settle on top of luxuries when I got really good luxury placements. And I think I had um, nine settlers out by turn 60, which is absurd. That's the second reason we like to settle on luxuries. Plains hills are the most important. Fresh water is really, really important. Uh, good workable tiles within range of the first two rings of the city. Stuff like mountains. Uh, I haven't talked about victory specific things. For example, mountains are really good if you're going for a religion or science victory because of the campus adjacency. For culture victories, coastline is really nice because seaside resorts are really good. Also for culture victories, generally speaking, uh, forests and jungles are really high value. A, because they add yields to the tiles that they're on in the early game. So they're kind of like a free improvement in the early game. But also because of the addition of Magnus, you can use this to not only accelerate your cities, but um, get wonders and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, resources increase the value of a starting location, like amber or sheep. Food resources are really, really valuable too, because what I like to do is harvest food resources and use them to force growth in my cities so that I can place my districts down sooner. I would much rather harvest the rice and get to population seven in one turn and then grow slowly after that without the rice than I would to slowly work the rice um, and get to population seven X amount of turns later because the cost of di districts scales with um, how many techs and how many civics you have. So generally speaking, that's why I will always recommend harvesting food resources like sheep, sheep, rice and wheat outside the early game. I would say once you hit, once you hit, say somewhere between medieval. Yeah, say once you're starting to hit medieval era, that's when you want to start considering to harvest these bonus resources rather than improving them. Improving them in the early game can be really, really powerful and I would absolutely recommend that. But probably once you have apprenticeship and maybe one other tech in here, maybe like, milit you know, depending on where you're going in this tech tree, you would want to start harvesting the food resources so you can just place your districts down a little bit sooner and therefore save yourself some production in the long run. This is a uh, this is actually a really, really good starting location for us to get in this video because it's a really, really bad starting location at a first glance. So let's talk about why I am not a fan of this starting location. First of all, we have desert. We have a lot of desert near us, and that is not very good. We do have a Plains Hill with easy access to a Plains Hill. However, it's very dangerous to settle on your Plains Hills when you don't have a lot of hills around. Um, for example, if we settle on this hill, we only have one, two, three, three hills in within two range of our city. Four if you count the desert hill, which kind of counts, but there's no food on it, which is a mark against it. It's just like, ugh, very, very painful. So let's move this warrior across the river. We want to see what we're missing out on. Yeah, this is again, another really bad starting location. So this starting location is bad for a number of reasons. Primarily, the desert is the problem. Desert is really bad for a starting location because um, they're basically dead tiles. Going for Petra, 
generally speaking, is going to require a lot of chops. We do not have a lot of forests here. So that's another point against it. Uh, the other thing that's holding the city back is we don't really have very good tiles to work no matter where we settle. If I settle in place, I settle on a marshland and I think I get the plus one food, but then my best tile is a one food three production tile and one food three production tiles, you generally speaking, you want to be working a minimum of a, minimum of a two food tile uh, the first turn you settle a city. But I think the best spot here is on this Plains Hill because again, we pick up that plus two production. Or plus one production, sorry. Um, the other reasons that this starting location is quite poor is that there is a lack of resources. I see no real bonus resources to speak of. And additionally, our luxury resource is an irrigation luxury resource. Irrigation luxury resources are inherently lower value in terms of starting location. Um, unless you can move and settle on top of them than other ones. I would much prefer to have a uh pasture luxury a camp luxury or a or sorry a, a camp luxury or a um mining luxury or a quarry luxury than a um plantation luxury because it's much harder to get irrigation we don't even have a weak tile to improve to get the boost for irrigation so that's another mark against this settlement um, we're also playing sumeria however we are playing sumeria uh, and I believe ziggurats can't be built on hills. So let me have a double check on that. Just trying to remember, just to give some examples of specific things. Yeah, so ziggurats can't be built on hills. So the idea of having these kind of plains tiles is kind of okay because it means we can build a lot of ziggurats. But, you know, uh, that's a small constellation. But Gilgamesh is really strong anyway. So that's just another, I, I'm, I'm trying to just weave in a little bit of Civ specific stuff. Uh, with the starting locations to help give you guys an idea of how to analyze them for yourselves i'm not trying to tell you how to do how to um i'm not trying to tell you what the best starting locations are rather i'm trying to give you my thought process so that you can learn to do it yourself that's that's my hope that's my goal so i think i've talked about most of the reasons why this starting location is bad the desert the lack of um resources the lack of good tiles to work. Generally speaking, you want to have tiles with at least three yields, preferably four, and you want to have at least two of those yields uh, to be food. And we have one four yield tile and then mostly two and threes. So this is very, very weak starting. Very, very weak. All righty. This is a fantastic starting location as an example because there's a lot of different decisions we could make. For example we could move to the coastline. If we are playing on a naval map, if we spawn off the coast, we may want to go to the coast because we're playing Norway. That's a consideration you might want to make. It will take us two turns to get over there, but you never know. There's also the option of settling on the T to get the plus one science and unlock the, the resource itself to be able to sell that to the AI. It would move us off the Plains Hill that we're on, so we would have to make a choice between the Plains Hill or the T However, by moving off of the Plains Hill, we could then work the Plains Hill jungle, which would be a two food, two production tile. And if we settle on the Plains Hill, we kind of don't really have a two food, two production tile to work, with the exception of the horses over here, which will take us a while to grow to. The only real downside, the other upside of moving towards the T, sorry, is that it would move us closer to this nice spot here, which is a pretty decent campus location. Combined with this science, we could have a pretty strong science game going. There are some other things in favor of this settlement. There's a lot of food resources here that we could harvest to be able to throw down districts early in the game and lock in their price at a cheap price. We have access to horses and easy pasture boosts. We also have access to wheat for getting the irrigation boost. So even if we don't settle on the tea, we can get the tea in a reasonable amount of time. So personally speaking, this would really be down to personal to two or, or sorry, so strategically speaking, this would be down to personal choice. Whether you want to settle for the production or the science plus the amenity, I think I would kind of always gravitate towards settling on the luxury just because being able to sell luxuries to the AI is so powerful for the early game that it's really hard to pass up. There's also 
quite a few jungles and forests in here, which means we could chop out settlers or we could chop out a wonder or we could chop out districts. So I would give this, I would give this a, a reasonably strong rating as a starting location. It's a little bit flat. There's a little bit of a lack of hills in this location, which is kind of making me worried too. Um, we do have some reasonably productive tiles. We have three hills in range of our capital and yeah, that's not so gr that's not so great. But by moving off of this plains hill, we essentially gave ourselves another hill. Uh, th did I say three hills? It, this is also in range. It is three tiles out, so we could maybe purchase it, but it's a little bit far. Generally speaking, I try to only count things within two tiles. So it's a little bit light on production, but if we settle on the luxury and are able to crack out settlers, that shouldn't hurt us too bad. So let's have a little bit of a look at this starting location for Persia. Now, this is a pretty rough starting location for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, we're starting in Tundra. However, they are Tundra Hills, which are not so bad. They're essentially just like Plains Hills minus one, minus one production, which is reasonably acceptable um, in terms of the production because they do have that one food on them. So again, they're just like Plains Hills as if you had minus one uh, production from mines. So it's not the worst Tundra start. So despite what I said about wanting to settle on Plains Hills, I still do think that moving to the incense here would be the best move. And there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, settling on a luxury is really, really powerful. But also settling on a luxury with, for example, a yield like Faith is really nice for getting that early getting that early pantheon without having to really do any sorts of investment. Not only that, but moving off of the Plains Hill will give us a four yield tile to work immediately in the capital for us to maybe crack out a quick settle or a, a quick a quick scout into Builder or something along those lines. Not only that, but moving off of this hill gives us access to another forest shop to be used later in the game that we could use for, for example, building wonders. Um, so that's why even though Plains Hills are generally speaking the best tile to settle on, sometimes moving off of a Plains Hill makes sense. Other dimensions of analysis for this city. Um, it's a little bit weak. It has some good tiles and some early culture it can pick up, which is quite nice. And you can see here we settled on the, the faith tile and we are now getting plus one faith, which is quite nice because that'll get us a, a fairly early pantheon without really having having to do anything for it. So let's do maybe like two more uh, examples of starting locations and then we'll wrap this up. So we are playing as the Zulu in this game and we're playing as Shaka. Now that means we don't have any specific bonuses towards, for example, religion victories or um, science victories or tourism victories. So really we're looking for production. We're looking to maximize the production in the early game. This is a really, really, really nice starting location. We have, not only do we have plains, which has really, really good production, we have ample hills within range, or rather, this I don't think this is a, uh, it is a hill. We have ample hills in range, but also at least two luxuries and some bonus resources that can be harvested for food and plenty of chops available. So I think uh, settling in place here is definitely a good move. Alternatively, moving to the Mercury, while an okay move would move me not only further from these diamonds, but also these hills, and I really don't want to move away from these hills. If this bananas here was a hill, I would actually consider moving onto it and settling on it, because that might give me access to more of these grassland hills over here in my capital. But as it stands, having a look at this, this is a reasonably strong starting location, and I would settle in place here, because I would pick up the extra production from the Plains Hill, and I have an immediate three food, one production tile to work and with another two food, two production tile to work down the line and a nice, a very, very, very nice uh, diamond mine to work for my third growth tile. So here's a good example of a fairly weak starting location. We do have hills, however, none of them are Plains Hills. This Plains Hills is off river, so we can't settle on it. We do have a couple of choices of where we want to settle. We could settle in place on the Grassland Hill. Unfortunately, even though the Grassland Hill 
is a two food two production tile. When we settle the city, the forest will be destroyed and it will revert back to a two food one production tile. I'll just show you that really quick. You see the one production disappeared. So that's really not ideal. It's not the sort of thing that we want to be doing. Now, when I'm looking at this, my personal opinion is that I see a stone. That's a really nice harvest for getting potentially wonders down the line, which is something also worth talking about when we come to talk about starting locations. Um, the potential for wonders is something worth considering, but I felt like it would be better if I just kind of kept things simple and focused on the basics of a strong start and not about chaining that together and getting wonders and stuff like that. So again, for me personally, I would settle on the citrus here. It's a really strong food tile yield. It'll unlock another mine for me because there's really not a whole lot of lo mines in range of this tile. But by moving here, I guarantee myself another mine, um, which is pretty good. And that means we would have one, two, three mines. I would say three mines is a good number to have, to have like a pretty basic city. Now I did know, I do know that this city right here did have a couple extra as well, had three as well. But I feel like, you know, when you've got a lot of flat land, you want to avoid settling on hills, if you can. If you've got a lot of hills, go hill wide. And so you can see we have the four food, one production in our capital, which means we can get away with working low, low food tiles um, in our capital, which is pretty damn nice. For example, we could work this plains hill, we could work this plains forest, or we could work the... Well, those are about the only two low food tiles. So I hope this kind of general purpose sort of kind of look at how I analyze my starting locations and how I make a decision about where I want to settle and why. Um, in particular, oh, another advantage of settling on the citrus is that it is a plantation resource that can be hard to unlock and we can immediately sell it. Just thought that would be worth repeating. Um, but yeah. I hope this has been a useful little bit of a tip video, a guide video. I don't know exactly like what I call this a guide video. Is this more like a strategy video? I don't know. But basically, I thought I would share how I approach um, analyzing starting locations with a view of having a good early game. There are more dimensions of analysis than I covered in this video. For example, wonders, civic boosts and um, tech boosts and stuff like that worth considering certain tech boosts only I kind of touched on irrigation, but there's others like the coastal boost, uh, improving to sea resources, building pastures, uh, building, uh, mining a resource, building a quarry, all these sort of smaller things like apprenticeship, uh, building mines and aqueducts less so. What else? I'm trying to just think of a couple other examples. Like you, those are other things you may want to consider into your settlement location, but at a lower level than just getting good raw yields to start with. Um, other dimensions of analysis, again, are wonders. Um, there's lots of different ways to do it, but also, you know, a, a good starting location for your empire doesn't necessarily guarantee you a good starting of the game because a truly good start of the game ha involves getting access to early early game city-states to get envoys with them. Uh, for example, getting pretty decent distance between you and your neighbor, for example, is another way that's going to decide whether or not you're going to have a strong early game. Uh, and that depends whether or not you want to be close to them because you want to go to early war or you want to be far away from them so you have plenty of room to expand. So I hope you guys have found this video useful in improving your ability to analyze and make decisions about where and why you should settle your cities, in particular on the first two to three turns. I will be doing more videos following up to talk about early game strategies and making decisions um, with regards to... I will be doing a follow-up video about early game strategies with regards to making decisions on how to get a good game going after you've picked a good settlement location for your capital. And not only that, but also how to identify good settlement locations for follow-up cities and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for them. Other than that, though, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.